Uh, we want to buy cars from private individuals uh, because we get to talk to them. We get to find out what the background of the car is. And we have a broker that we, uh, I don't want to say we employ because it's an independent broker. Scott and Betsy Tate are uh, from Pensacola. And uh, Scott used to be a, one of our salespeople. He went independent and uh, left our employment and said, I'm going to help buy cars for Frontier Motors. So he's a broker. So what he does is he scours the Internet for cars for sale by owner. And then what we do is we make offers on these particular cars. And there, a lot of customers always think it's a scam when somebody calls. Matter of fact, it's kind of interesting when I look at some of the Craigslist ad, I see on the bottom, no dealers, please. Now, why is a customer afraid to deal with a dealer? If anything, you think it would be a little bit easier. And that's why Scott uh, is uh, a very good uh, help for us because he's not a dealer. Uh, he's an independent person that might call you up and say, I have a dealer that's interested in your car, and they're going to make an offer on your car. Now, how can they make an offer on a car without seeing? It's very simple. I've got my guidebooks right here, and it tells me what the NADA is. It tells me what they're going for at the auction. It tells me what the retail is. It also tells me what every car like that is selling for with the 150-mile to a 500-mile radius. So I can pretty much, with a matter of two to three minutes, give uh, Scott, an offer on that car subject to any reconditioning. And I've got a letter here, Don, I want you to read that um, I got from one of our customers that was very skeptical. He happened to have his car on Craigslist. So um, Scott sent me the link. I made an offer. And this is what happened once the customer got the offer. All right. It's addressed to Scott, Scott Ford, who is uh, one of your top salesmen. Actually, yeah, down Scott there. Tate. That's the um, buyer. Oh, I'm sorry. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so it was running a little late, so when I opened the garage, the vet was covered in pollen. I just rinsed it off and left. When I arrived and got out, everyone seemed to be aware I was coming. The comments were all how great and how pretty this Corvette was. It really just needed vacuum and washing. I have to admit we were a little skeptical by just dealing on the Internet. Then arriving, we expected the buyer to start trying to cut the payment price after his inspection and driving. Much to our surprise, everything and everyone, including Todd and all that we met, was outstanding, polite, and professional. The buyer, whose name he's embarrassed to say he forgot, <laughs> pulled out the contract, wrote our agreed amount down, and had me sign it. He returned a few minutes later, had me check for the full and agreed upon amount. Todd shook my hand and said he appreciated our honesty about the vet as it was as we promised. They let me take my Alabama floor mats out, and everyone again commented on the paint color and how nice the condition was. Uh, something is wrong, my wife stated. This was too easy, but wait, there's more. We're still skeptical. I give up my car, the title, and the keys for a piece of paper they said was a check. Oh, okay. We programmed in the bank address, and off we go. We walked up to the teller and stated we were from Mobile. We had just sold a car, and we had a check that we would like to cash. The teller immediately asked if we sold it at Frontier Motors. <laughs> he said, my legs got weak. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> then she stated that they, Frontier Motors, buy a lot of cars and the bank cashes their checks. Now I'm beginning to get some of my strength back. The bank verified with Todd about the issuance of the check. All was still too good to be true, he says. The teller said she had a little problem with cashing the check. And before she could finish, my wife said, see? I told you there was going to be a problem. The teller smiled and said the only problem was she didn't have that much cash in her drawer. <laughs> so part of it would have to be a cashier's check. When we decide to buy another vehicle, we intend to look on Frontier Motors website first and try to give them our business. Scott, thank you and all at Frontier uh, Motors for a smooth and extremely professional transaction. And it's signed by your clients. Oh, that's pretty good. Thanks, Don. That's a good read. And folks, what, what I'm getting at is that if you've got a car for sale, instead of doing like these people did, these people put this vehicle on Craigslist, and after about two months, they, they weren't able to sell the vehicle. And one of the reasons is, and people always wonder, well, why aren't people calling me? I'm a private person. Well, if you've got a trade-in, you pretty much know that you're probably not going to take a trade-in if it's a private individual selling the car. Where at Frontier Motors, when we sell that Corvette, we'll take anything in trade. And most people these days that are buying a car in that $30,000 bracket already are driving something that they need to dispose of first. So that's where we come in. The other thing we can uh, offer that, that the customers can't is we can offer financing. We've got up to 15 lenders that have the best rates in town 
A lot of times we can even meet your credit union and your own bank, so we can offer financing for the car. Uh, we can also uh, offer uh, warranties on the car. This particular car happened to be a 2006 model. I think it's got 17,000 miles on a 2006 Corvette. So it's uh, it, we can also offer a warranty on that particular car, which he's not able to do because the car is out of warranty. So you might, uh, if you're listening to this on uh, the radio or watching this on TV, just remember uh, if Scott uh, Tate happens to give you an email that it's legitimate that we are interested interested in buying the car. Now, the only time it doesn't go smooth, let's say this gentleman uh, came in with his Corvette and the tires were bald. I would still buy his car, but I would deduct about $1,000 for tires because obviously on a Corvette, tires are more than normal. I think the average set of tires costs about $600. On a Corvette, they're quite a bit more than that. And and the customer at that point would make a decision whether he would take that or whether he would drive back home. And as long as you're honest with the description of the car, we're going to give you what we talked about. Yeah, So it makes it very simple. And I would say 90% of the time, there's not an issue. We just write you a check. Every once in a while, a customer doesn't see that the right rear window on his car wasn't working because he hasn't used it in five years. So if it costs $300 to fix the window, we would deduct $300 off the purchase price. But if you have a car for sale, call Frontier Motors. And what we will do is we will give you a bid right over the phone. And you can do this. You can go ahead and list the car yourself, or you can make that call first. And what we can do is tell you what we'll write a check for, the second thing we can do is we'll tell you what we can consign it for. In other words, I'll give you a little bit more money. On the Corvette, for example, I offered the gentleman $1,500 more on consignment because I didn't have to tie up my cash. So that kind of makes sense. I get a car for free. Now, I might not make as much money on that car if I give him $1,500 more, but a little bit is better than nothing at all. The third thing I can do is tell you what you should sell that car for. I can give you the NEDA book, which might not mean a lot, but I can tell you what, what's the reality on this car. One of the reasons we were able to purchase this car is because he had the car grossly overpriced. And I believe he used the Kelly Blue Book instead of the NEDA. When we showed him how we came up with the values that we were paying quite a bit more than average wholesale for his beautiful car, but it wasn't as much as retail, he said, you know what, I'm just going to sell the car because I can cancel the insurance. Like he said, he got cash at the bank. He didn't know that. He didn't know, and I didn't know this also, that a lot of banks don't have a lot of cash. So for you guys out there thinking of bank robbery, just remember that. You can't go into a bank these days and get $100,000 out of it. They don't have that money. Um, this car was about a $30,000 car, and it was kind of interesting that they did not they have, have $30,000 at that particular branch. And I'm, pro- I'm sure there's a reason for it. So if they do get stuck up, they're not going to lose all their cash. <laughs> but they had about half of it sitting at the dealership. So anyways, that's how it works as far as buying a car from Frontier Motors. So, And you can also go to our website and kind of walk you through it that if you got a car for sale what to do for that car it'll uh, and the best thing to do is just give us a call uh, or uh, stop in a 230 beverly parkway and let us take 15 minutes the kind of cool thing that we have these days with the smartphones um when i have my smartphone right here i have an app on my smartphone that hooks into my computer i can scan the id number and it'll immediately uh, go to the car i type in the mileage i've got a camera in here so i take a about five or six pictures of the car. When I get into my computer, it's all in there. I can actually do it right. Uh, I can appraise the car outside of the building with my phone. These are cool things that we never were able to do years ago. 